Everyone, um, I do see quite a number of um, Christian members already um, joining online, but um, let's just wait for another minute to see if there will be more um, Christian colleagues joining. So just um, wait for another minute. Thanks. Hello everyone. So um, let's start the meeting and uh, start with um, seeing who is on the call. So um, I see Alan from Afrinic, Andre from Ripe Craig from APNIC, um, Ernest um, I believe from Afrinic, Esteban from uh, Blacknick, John Sweeting, Aaron. Michael from Aaron, Nirani um, from the right region. So I think these are all the CRISP team members that I see on the call at the moment. And um, please let me know if you are um, joining the call as CRISP team member and I haven't called your name. Okay, so I think we have everybody. Um, and everybody is in, in terms of everybody who I recognize. So let's move on to um, review the agenda uh, today. So the main thing that we'd like to do today is um, see the feedback um, that has been received on the um, NRO IANA transfer mailing list and, um, and, and um, have discussions on how we will address those um, points that have been raised. So go through the agenda by agenda. Um, the first thing we'll have is review the action review, that's uh, agenda number two. Um, agenda number three, that's the thing that I, I mentioned we'd like to cover mainly, review feedback and actions needed um, based on what's being raised on the NLO IANA list. And then um, agenda number four is uh, we would like to um, discuss a little bit de details of how we would prepare the second draft. And then, um, anything else that you'd like to discuss? So, is there anything else that um, that is actually not on the agenda at the moment, but you would like to discuss it today? No, I'm not hearing from anybody. So, um, let's move on to actions review. So, on um, the first action, minutes from the previous meetings, I actually see them already uploaded on the NRO website, so I believe that's done. And a publication of the edited version, that's done as well, and I made announcement about the edited version on the NRO I analyst, um, so that's done as well. Version control, I think um, Herman has already helped us uh, in terms of um, keeping version control uh, in the URL already. 
and um, I think there's some more work to be done on once her man has the word version of the draft so that he can keep track of the date and version inside each document. That's my understanding about actions review or C. Um, Herman, do you have any clarifications or anything to add from your side? Correct. Uh, Isumi, um, just a few minutes ago, uh, Michael uh, sent an email to the uh, list uh, and he will provide in the Word version of, uh, of those documents. So I would be able to uh, make changes and keep the control change as part of the document. Great. Thank you, Herman. So um, let's uh, move on to action number D, um, 2D. So. List of issues on NRO IANA list. Um, John Sweeten has helpfully, um, you know, listed all the issues that has been listed on the um, on the mailing list. And um, I actually made a few updates about the latest status on uh, what has been discussed on the Chris team list. And I'd like to go into the details and confirm the status later on this agenda, uh, agenda number three. So that's done. Um, John, is there anything else you would like to add from your side? Uh, no, that's, uh, that's that, I, you know, I put the skeleton together and got a, got one on there and uh, you did a great job in updating it and, and adding the stuff. Uh, I just, how going forward, um, how, we, how we're going to keep it up to date, I guess, would be something, you know, that we should talk about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, certainly. And thank you so much, John, for working on this. So let's uh, discuss how we can um, keep the list updated and, and the easiest way with like no too much, um, you know, workload with balance with the workload. So thank you, John. So let's move on to um, 2E, and this is some um, user-friendly recordings. Um, just as a recap of um, those who, who may not be fully following on um, uh, why this is raised, um, I think we already have the recordings um, on the NRO website. But um, one of the community members um, actually raised that this is actually not so uh, friendly for Unix users, and he is not able to um, have access to this recording. And the latest status I'm aware of is um, Haman is actually uh, working with the LACNIC team on how we can um, address this. So um, Haman, or would anybody from the NL Secretariat be able to give us the latest status on this? Um, Isumi, yes, uh, we found a solution based on Windows. Uh, so we can convert uh, .rf, which is the, um, uh, the files from WebEx to MP4. It's based on Windows. Um, right now, all the people behind the support of, of, uh, of the Chris team has uh, Apple um, uh, platform, uh, but we have asked people back in LACNIC offices uh, to help us to convert the file, the files. I hope I can come back to you uh, soon with uh, with, a, with, uh, with a conclusion of this request, but uh, I think we have a solution on this. This would be just a matter of time that uh, conversions can be made. Thank you so much. I'm very, very happy, and thank you so much, Herman, and also LACNIC team for uh, working on this. So I'm glad that we, we do we are able to um, provide this more user friendly um, format of recording so that we would have um, people able to listen to what we discuss. So um, does anybody have any questions about the actions that we've reviewed? No. So then um, let's move on to our agenda num uh, item number three. Um, and firstly, I'd like to um, hear from the CRISP team members whether you observe any discussions within your respective regions in addition to what we see on the NRO list. Um, for for Aaron, the, the list has yes. been quiet. Quiet. Aaron, okay. Aaron, Thank you, John. On, on the Aaron list. Thank you, John. So Aaron list, um, nothing being discussed. Um, how about Afrinic? Uh, there have been no recent discussions on the Afrinic list either. 
Thank you, Alan. And um, on the AP Nicholas, it's the same. Uh, but um, I'd like to share that we are planning to um, hold a WebEx uh, session uh, based on the great uh, idea from Craig that um, will share this idea of the proposal with the community. So we'll see if we would um, have additional feedback questions. And we're certainly happy to share if we hear anything from the community. So um, does anybody from the colleagues in the APNIC region like to add anything to this? No, I think you've covered that well. Thank you. Thanks, Craig. And let me move on to LACNIC. There is no news in, in our list also. Noted. Um, thank you, Esteban. And anything uh, discussed in the right region list? No, same in the right region. It's uh, been very quiet. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, so I think the general observation is that um, people are mainly um, um, making comments on the global list, but not on the regional ones. So um, the next thing I would like to discuss is more of administrative uh, matter related to the issues list. Um, um, Haman, would you be able to show the list um, of the, the list that we've compiled, which is, uh, I think you've helped us upload on the NRO website. And so just for um, the, the team members to be able to see what are the kind of, um, of, of columns on the, the information that we've gathered so far. And um, I think the idea is that this is not just for the CRIS team members um, confirming the status, but we would also like to uh, share this list uh, to the community as well so that they can keep track of um, the status of our work. And what I'd like to consult you is whether you are comfortable with the um, the issues that the, all the fields that are posted up, is there anything else that you think is necessary? And I think it is also possible to separate um, the field that's necessary for Chris team work and the field that is ne um, necessary for sharing with um, with the community. So if they are equal, that's totally fine. But um, if there are any fields that you think it's more benefitable to share first within the Chris team, but not necessarily with the community, then I think that's something that um, I would like to confirm as well. Uh, so this one might be on um, if the CRISP team members and anybody and all of the observers, if you have access to the website, um, the NRO website, um, you may be able to see the full column um, through that. So um, please go to uh, the CRISP team website hosted by NRO, and then you can see the CRISP team timeline meetings. And then you can see on the Monday, 29th of December, sixth meeting, and you see a link there that says um, I Anna Expert Summary Discussions. If you click a link there, you should be able to see the list of um, the Excel file that um, we have compiled to um, to to gather um, the current status of um, major issues that are being posted on the mailing list. Are you able to see this? Uh, it's for me? Yep. Um, I just posted the, uh, the link in the chat room uh, um, in, in case someone wants to have the link uh, directly. Oh, great. Thank you file. so much, Roman. I uploaded the, the file as well, but um, is apparently WebEx is not handled very well Excel file. It produces a document of 228 pages, which is not practical for <laughs> for reviewing. Mm -hmm. So, yep, yep, understood. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you, Herman. So, um, thank you for sharing this link. So, um, everybody, if you could uh, click the link that Herman has uh, sent on the chat, then that's where you can see the um the Excel file that's being compiled. 
I hope people are now able to、um, have access and take a look at the, the file that we are talking about. So the fields start from the initial post, where who has posted, which date, and the thread title, and then、um, then goes on to categorizing the issues. So the issues that are being raised, for example, anything related to review committee, anything related to、um, intellectual property rights, things like that, and then summary of what's being the, the summary of the issues, and、um, the another field is. Summary of discussion on the IANA、um, expert mailing list, and then lastly the Christine status. I, I I actually have one more field that I've added, and that's action or suggested in Christine discussions. And this is what I would like to particularly ask for your feedback: whether we would like to、um, share this with.、Um, This list with the community on the on the NR website, or we just、uh, use this as as、uh, something as a reference for Chris Kim's work. The reason for this is that this is、um, more of brainstorming of actions that we can possibly consider as Chris Kim, rather than official action that we've decided to、um, to take. So、um, I'm not sure if. This would be helpful for the community to、um, have this field,、um, or it would make give more confusion as in the action do we actually officially plan to take. So, does yeah, anybody I, I have any? Yeah, this is John. I, I totally agree with you. If it's if it's not an official action that we've agreed to take, then we probably shouldn't put it out there where somebody might think it is. Mm -hmm. Thank you, John. Thank you for this feedback. Then maybe this is just for sharing among the、um, this field、um, the, the suggested actions within Chris Team. This is just as reference for us within the Chris Team rather than something official. So,、um, Narani, I think I see your hand up.、Uh, thank you, Simi.、Uh, I agree with John's comment,、um, but I also think it's important that. People, if people raise things on the global list, that there is some sort of response or action,、um, and I presume、uh, that if someone raises something on the list、uh, that we think is is substantial enough, that、uh, that that should at least be brought to the CRISP team at a teleconference or, or something like that.、Um, so we might not want to have. The, To, to put down official actions unless they're official, but we might want to put something about that. This is will be taken, be discussed at a teleconference or or something like that, so that people feel that we're responding to、um, to their comments. Thanks. Thank you, Nurani. I totally agree with、um, um, your comment as well, and、um, so that's why、um, we also have this、uh, field. Chris team status, and we can perhaps、um, update here. Like、um, most of it is under review up at this stage, but、um, if this is something that we actually already discussed at the Chris team teleconference, maybe we can update this、uh, status saying it was discussed at the I don't know sixth or seventh、uh, teleconference or something like this. And then in addition,、um, I would like to consult you.、Um, I personally feel that if For these individual issues being raised, rather than just、um, passively discussing among ourselves, it might be useful to share on the mailing list. This is that something that we agreed, and this is the direction that we're considering,、um, and share proactively on the on the、um, IANA NRO list. That's what I feel, and、uh, I welcome any feedbacks related to this idea as well, Andre. Hi, Zemir. Well, first of all, let me just comment on the、uh, this Excel sheet. I think that's an excellent work, and a lot of work I see has been put、um, into producing this kind of you know list of issues.、Um, I think what you suggested is it's an excellent suggestion, but I, I just would like to remind us that on the fifth of January, that's a deadline for submissions. So if we feel capable of、um, actually summarizing those issues and Sending them to list in this time frame that makes sense. Otherwise, 
maybe it makes sense to you know come up with certain positions in the Chris team and then release them after we close the the, the line for feedback on the fifth of January. For instance, I myself, I, I can dedicate very little resources in this week, unfortunately. Um, uh, I don't know how about other Chris members. Um, so that, that's my point. Um, thank you, Andre. So um, just to clarify um, and make sure I understand your point. Um, so we, you're saying that we should mo more focus on consolidating our, our, a position on each of the issues. And then um, maybe it's not so much of a priority to share the outcome of our discussions. And then people can actually see what we actually reflected on what we published on the 5th of January. Is that on what you said? Yeah. Well, I think if, if feedback still coming in, right, uh, based on this assumption, um, maybe a better approach is to keep discussions internally on the CRISP uh, mailing list and see how issues, uh, whether new issues are added or whether new positions on existing issues are coming from the community. And then as soon as possible after the deadline for feedback, release CRISP team positions on those issues and then incorporate them in the second version of the CRISP uh, uh, draft response. Oh, totally understood. Oh, thank you. I think um, uh, so. Rather than just uh, starting to have discussions in the middle before the actual deadline, it's better to have a more integrated um, 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 consideration, including all the additional comments that we may be expecting, and then we will certainly share our position um, on each of the issues being raised. Um, okay. Thank you, Andre. Um, that makes sense to me, and um, does anybody else um, feel we should handle this uh, differently? Okay, thank you, Narani, uh, for confirming that you're, com uh, you're comfortable with this approach. And um, I, so while I've actually said that this um, um, position um, F is still um, actions to be dis um, continue to be discussed on the Chris team. If there happens to be some issue that we think, okay, this is already fixed and we are quite comfortable with this um, uh, approach, we, I think it is also okay to update on um, this Chris team status and explain what this approach is, is necessary. But this is important, it's also, of course, important that we all agree as Chris team we're comfortable enough with um, this. And the basis is that we will try to wait until the 5th of January as much as possible or confirm for more comprehensive um, consideration. So um, is this uh, clear to everybody? Um, anybody have any further questions or feedback? No. No. OK. Then uh, let's move on to the details of the issues being listed. So um, I'd like to particularly um, hear your feedback about intellectual property rights and also another point that's being uh, raised related to review team. And then I think there's another point that's um, raised related to the terms of the contract. And then maybe go into a little bit details of each of the um, the issues based on the Excel sheet. So um, first on the um, intellectual property rights related issues, um, just to summarize, there are two points that are being raised, and one is related to the use of IANA.org, and the other is related to the use of database. And I think so far I've received feedback from Craig that rather than going into the details of each of the intellectual property rights, I might be better to consider this as a way of um, the rights that's related to the operation of the IANA uh, function as a whole and then maybe address it in the way that's similar to the way that it's addressed uh, today under the NTIA um, IANA contract and add this uh, clause in, in related to intellectual property rights. 
So that's my understanding of Craig's feedback. And is there anything else you would like to add on Craig? From Um, I see hand from Andre. Um, so, Andre? Hi. Um, well, I think maybe bad to actually separate the, this into two issues because I think they might um, call for different different approaches for solutions. Um, one thing is uh, the database rights. I mean, the, the 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 rights on data access and publishing. I think uh, the direction that uh, I've seen in the community and also the direction that ITF has taken is declaring, um, and again, the details of how we do that is, is outside uh, for now, uh, declaring uh, it in the public domain, right? I think the issue of IANA.org and IANA trademark are uh, quite different. Um, they're mostly, well, right now they're registered with ICANN and it might require different solutions. So it might be actually making more sense to separate and keep those issues under the same umbrella, IPR issues, but um, actually having two distinct issues uh, under CRISP team considerations. Well, maybe, maybe to clarify this a little bit more, uh, for instance, issue on database rights are now um, uh, held by the NTIA, right? And that might require, I don't know how we want to resolve that issue, but that might require a multi-step approach. Um, and I think that that needs to be done in, in concert with other communities, perhaps, because it talks about the general data, and uh, if you look at the uh, NTA contract, uh, it's clearly stated that this corporate is in the hands of the NTA, uh, while IANA.org and IANA trademark is a different thing. Understood, Andre. And I see um, Alan agreeing that um, these intellectual property rights issues could be divided into two issues. So um, unless anybody feels differently that um, we should integrate, maybe the approach we want to take is uh, we, we separately consider an approach to these um, issues. Um, does anybody have any comments uh, about separating these two intellectual property rights related issues? Nope. Okay, um, then let's uh, separate these issues. And I think one approach related to the IANA.org, I believe Andre has already shared the draft of the IETF. So um, one possible way to move forward could be we could build on that draft that already exists um, on the um, IETF and then just uh, make a, a couple of edits or consider some additional factor which may be necessary in terms of um, number of resources. Um, does this approach make sense to the Chris team? Assuming it's Craig here, um, one of the points I made in, on the mailing list is that I think um, we are perhaps diving too much into the detail of the actual contract. Um, at the moment, Part three, um, what we have is simply an outline of, you know, the big picture agreement that we are proposing. Um, and as I mentioned in the mailing list, I think the intellectual property rights is part of the Transition Act services. Um, you know, if there is going to be a successor operator in the future, then there are a lot of things that need to be sorted out in terms of transitioning out from ICANN to the successor. And IP rights is only one of many issues to be dealt with. So um, I suppose it worries me a little bit that we are so focused on one aspect of the transition um, and by doing that kind of ignoring the other stuff. Um, what I suppose we need to say here in part three 
is that we expect the contract to cover to adequately cover all the services that are necessary in order to transition out from ICANN to a successor in the future if it becomes necessary, um, and that ICANN will agree to provide that those transition out services. Um, I might just add that those transition out services clauses are very, very common in contracts like this, where um, you know in the future it might, may be necessary to transition things out to someone else. Yes, um, thank you, Craig. I, I do recall reading this uh, comment from you on the mailing list as well. And um, so that was something that I brought at the beginning of this um, this issue, whether people agree with this approach. And then I think afterwards I heard from Andre to possibly separate this issue um, that's related to IANA.org and then uh, the issues, any other issues related to intellectual property rights. So, Andre, I'll please uh, comment. Um, uh, first of all, I agree with Craig. We should avoid uh, putting too much detail into our response. At the same time, I think we are talking about boundary conditions, and uh, I think uh, identifying those issues, all the issues that are important for transition in this response is very important. If we are missing something, we, we should find it and add to this uh, response, but not as detailed contractual term but rather expectation of the community rather than as requirements and let uh, the following process to actually nail this down in legalese terms. Um, one thing why I think it's important to pinpoint those issues here in this response is that resolution of those issues require collaboration with other communities. I think it's, it's a point whether we want to um, instigate or start this collaboration and discussions within this process, within the CRISP team, or we would like to delegate this, those discussions to some other parties, I don't know, to areas drafting the contract. Uh, in my view, um, I think agreeing on boundary conditions and general kind of outline of the solution at this stage is more important. That's why I thought, yes, no detailed language, but identifying requirements and expectations of the community on those key issues is important in the response. Thank you, Andre. So, um, if I understood your point um, uh, correctly, we don't necessarily need to um, nail down each of the details in the actual uh, proposal document necessarily but be able to um, clarify what would be the general expectations of the community uh, depending on, on different aspects of the, the um, intellectual property rights. Is that what you were saying? Yes, Azumi, thank you. Okay, thank you. And I, I'm seeing um, um, comment feedback from Michael and uh, John are supporting Craig's approach, so not to have too much details in the specific contract provisions. And um, and then Michael also saying that he, he agrees with Andre as well. So as long as we don't really go into the details of how um, the contract should be um, phrased and such um, in terms of the proposals we develop. But um, it may be, if, if there's a particular expectation that we have as a community, especially related to the IANA.org, that um, we also have to work with, um, with um, the, the IETF, then that may be something that's um, worth noting as a, I don't, maybe not necessarily as a, as specific proposal, but something like a, something that we can actually still document um, in the proposal document. So um, Nirani um, needs support. We need to identify the issues, but not to write detailed language here. Okay, so I think we, we do have an agreement about the general approach, not to go into the details of language and listing all the conditions but then um, be able to um, give guide the general direction about the, uh, the expectations of the community uh, depending on each of the intellectual property rights related issues, uh, one related to the IANA.org and other related issues, especially including a database. 
So um, I think for this issue, I would actually like to um, ask for volunteers who would be willing to work on first. Um, the language of how we would um, describe this issue in the proposal and also um, how we would actually um, uh, clarify our rationale for each of the issues identified. Not necessarily document all of them in the proposal document, but then be able to explain to our community this is how we actually um, uh, um, want to approach these separate issues. So, um, do we have any volunteers who is willing to work on this? Oh, thank you, Andre. So, um, Andre is willing to volunteer. So, um, thank you so much. So, I, I will leave it to you for this issue on both the drafting and then coming up with the rationale on explaining to the community uh, why we think in a certain way and how we want to uh, move for direction, both for the IANA.org and then other um, intellectual property rights related issues. So um, does anybody have any further comments related to this intellectual property rights related issue? No? Okay, then uh, let's move on to the issue related to review team. Um, the basic comment is that um, the, the representatives of the review team uh, should be um, chosen from the community. That's the basic comment that's being uh, expressed on the on the um, IANA mailing list. And then that's one point. And I think for this particular point, we can actually explain that we do indeed um, plan to have representatives from each of the RIR region. That's the current scheme, I believe. This is already described in our draft proposal as well. The second point that I would like to um, to consult the team is there's a suggestion to make use of the existing mechanism. So to have the NRONC to be the um, be the members of the review team, so that we already have this um, representatives who are actually. Um, advising on the global policies, but they can actually also do the review on the IANA's um, service uh, level, the, not, not, not themselves doing the review, but then provide advice to NROEC on doing the review of the IANA service level. So that's a suggestion that's being put on their mailing list. And I, I'd like to hear how others um, feel about this, uh, this suggestion. Alan. Uh, hi. Um, I I think that it should be a separate um, team because the uh, NRO um, a sorry the ASO AC or the NRO NC is involved in development of policy, and I think we should keep that separate from review of the service level. So I think it should definitely be a separate team. And I think I said that on the INA Expo mailing list. Thank you, Alan. And um, I see Andre supporting this. And I, it does seem consistent with um, the point that we agreed that uh, these uh, IANA operations and the global policy development is a separate issue. So I think it does make sense to have a separate representative because the purpose is different. So if um, does anybody else have other comments uh, related to this? No? Then um, I will still confirm on the mailing list uh, for those who are not in the call, but then maybe we can consider the current um, Chris team's position is, yes, we will have representatives from the community from each RIR region, but these representatives will be different, separate from the um, NRO and C, because the role it, would, it is expected to take is different. So um, if we don't see any um, further comments about this, um, I, I see Nirani um, supporting Alan's point as well. 
Then um, I'd like to move on to, um, to the issue related to the terms of the contract. I think um, this is based on the comment that was raised to make um, the terms of the contract to be uh, automatically be renewed unless there are issues um, of of renewing it. That's a suggestion that's made on the um, on the mailing list. And um, I'd like to. I think Michael has kindly um, given us a really good summary of the possible uh, options that's available. And what I'd like to discuss is whether. This is something that we want to, this level of details is at this stage is something that we'd like to discuss at this stage as a part of the proposal. And um, that's one point. And do we feel that we, even if we don't incorporate this in the proposal itself, um, do we feel we need to explain to this um, suggestion um, if we, we happen to have if we happen to favor a certain approach at this stage or something that we take uh, priority, is this something that we can actually at least share? Or we, we think that, um, do we think it's just simply too detailed at this stage? So I'd like to hear feedback from um, the Chris team about this. Um, so I'm not hearing um, any comments immediately this, at this stage, and um, so I'm not sure if this this is because people can't really like don't have immediate opinion at this stage, or um, this is not an issue that we we want to focus or. Does anybody have, can anybody share the reason for not making comments then? Okay, um, so repeat this issue again, yes, um, noted. So um, if you actually look at the chart, um, the Chris team status chart, and then um, please take a look at this, um, this issue that says, um, number, um, it's in A6, um, and then the issue is related to contract. And then the summary of the issue is the contract should not be termed based on, um, based on as indicated in section three, but should have termination conditions. And it seems to me that this um, proposal is um, based on we should have uh, we should clearly state what would be the termi termination conditions and um, also um, to make it automatic renewal unless there are clear issues um, to, be, to terminate the contract. But I think uh, Craig did have, may have had a better summary. I don't know if Craig is still in, on the call. If you are, uh, maybe you can uh, explain this um, point better than myself. Um, Craig, would you be able to clarify? Sure, Izumi. I think um, the point I made was that, um, which I think you have already captured it very, very well. Um, the option, as Michael has put out, is that the contract could have a, a certain number of years. So the, the contract could be, say, for four years. Um, and at the end of it, it expires. And then you can either automatically renew that contract um, or have it retended. What that means is that I can can only assume to have the contract for the first four years, say, if it is a, a fixed term contract. What um, the... Uh, from what I read on the mailing list, what Sean is 
questioning is whether the contract should go forever, um, but with termination provisions, termination conditions. So if there is a breach, um, or if um, you know ICANN board doesn't um, um, uh, endorse the global TDP that we talked about in a way that is consistent with the ASO MOU, for example, then those are conditions that can trigger a termination. So, so the difference is really just this. One is a contract that that assumes that it will continue to run until some termination conditions or, or events of default appear or occur. Or the other one is that they will um, run for a periodic term, and and at the end of at the end of the term, they either renew automatically or by by the action of one or more of the parties. Thank you very much, Craig. And um, so I'd like to first hear whether we feel this level of details is necessary at this stage to include in the proposal. Do people have opinions about this? Do you think we should actually clearly define um, at the time of submitting our proposal to ICG? Um, Izumi, I certainly don't think that we need to have this defined at this stage. Um, it is actually a big question, um, but I suspect that if we try to try to get a consensus at this point, I'm not sure if we will reach it. Um, so I, um, I think we are already agreeing to put in a clear termination clause that deals with uh, the breaching of a ASMOU or breaching of um, the ICANN boards obligation to endorse a global PDP. I don't think we need to say a lot beyond that at this point. Thank you um, for this uh, point, Craig. And I see Alan uh, supporting this, uh, John as well, Nurani. Uh, and that's actually consistent with my personal opinion as well. So uh, I think this is uh, this level of details is not necessary at this stage. And I think we can clarify to the uh, the proposal that this is something that we will actually certainly look at the time of the proposal and make sure we, we will have a condition that ensures the stability of the IANA um, operations. But this is something more of the details to be discussed um, at the time of um, developing SLA. So if that makes sense to everybody, uh, I also see a comment from Michael. So yeah, I think it seems I, um, all of you at the call agree with this approach. So I think uh, we can um, explain um, uh, explain as in, in this way as I described to this is um, to the person who suggested this um, who made the suggestion. So I think those were actually the three major points that I actually wanted to consult you at the call because that needs um, you know um, exchanging opinions. And I do have still a couple of um, other points um, that that is actually posted up on on the NRO mailing list. But it's more of a small point such as, I think there was a suggestion to change the global uh, development, global policy development process. And I think it's just simply a matter of saying that this is an outer scope of Christine's work. And if people feel that there needs to be change to the global policy development, then please go through the regular uh, policy development process to suggest this change. So unless um, we have strong opinions or um, that we want to discuss this at the call today, I think we can simply reconfirm um, about this, how we respond to this on the mailing list. Does anybody have any comments about this? Nope. Then uh, let's move on to agenda. Oh, oh, no! Actually, I want to confirm who will reply to this. Um, this the last uh, two issues that um, we discussed. So uh, on the review committee, um, um, I, I don't think we need to um, we need to reflect anything additional on the proposal document. But um, do we feel at this stage that we should? Um, respond to um, this comment, or should we just uh, wait until the 5th of um, January? Uh, 
Uh, Andre. Is it, it's just a clarification question. When you said respond to those issues, and I understand it covers the IPR issues that we just discussed, uh, I thought we were talking about responding to the Chris mailing list and trying to form Chris team position on this issue rather than responding to IANA transfer mailing list um, before forming this position. Just this is clarification what you what you exactly mean by responding. Yes, uh, yes, thank you. So, um, of course, the first would be to um, uh, confirm on the Chris team mailing list, um, including those who are not at the call. And then, um, since this seems to be an issue with no um, strong concerns or controversies, if this is something that we can actually share on, on the, on the IANA list um, um, at early stage, um, I, I wanted to see if this is something that we can actually respond earlier um, on the IANA list um, before the 5th of January, or uh, we want to wait until, uh, until all the all other comments are received um, on the 5th of January. That, that, that's what I wanted to confirm. So the default is definitely confirm the position on the Chris T mailing list, that's for sure. So um, oh, did, did that clarify your question, Andre? Yes, thank you, Izumi. And, and to be clear, when I said uh, we should probably wait till 5th of this, uh, January, uh, I meant that we shouldn't commit to respond to community before the 5th of January, but if the team uh, has a position and comfortable and confident with this position, we should certainly share this as soon as possible. Yes, uh, thank you. Um, thank you, Andre. And Alan? Uh, I, I think it's useful for us to respond uh, on the INAS for mailing list, um, even if we don't have an official position, just to say that we have uh, heard the suggestion and we're considering it. Even if we don't have an official position, I think it's useful to give at least that much feedback as soon as possible. Thank you, Alan. So um, my, my suggestion is um, how about um, for the issues that we actually have no objections at this CRISP team call, we can double check on the CRISP team um, mailing list uh, for the next uh, 24 hours. And then if there are no like, additional comments, we can certainly share on the, um, the CRISP, uh, on the, on the IANA, um, IANA NRO mailing list. Would this sound reasonable to you, Alan, or do you feel that we should actually just uh, share as soon as possible? Uh, no, review for 24 hours is fine with me. Okay, thank you, Alan. So, um, yep. So, um, is that okay with you, Andres, as well? Yes. Okay. Thank you, Andre. So let's. Um, so for any issues that has no controversies uh, on the Christy, um call, let's confirm and uh, for the next 24 hours on the Christie mailing list, and then as soon as we're over with this um, and no further um, comments issues, then let's share on the global list, IANA list. So um, I hope this is clear. Then, if there are no further comments or questions related to this, um, so that's what we do for the review committee. And then I think we also um, agreed about the contract as well. So I think we can take the same approach for both the review committee and the contract. Um, so I would actually like to have somebody who would um, be willing to take the lead in um, confirming the CRISP team's um, uh, position related to review one on review team, and then the second uh, related to the contract. Is anybody willing to um, volunteer and then uh, further work on to communicate on the INR mailing list, um, the global mailing list? Thank you, Alan, for volunteering. Um, so for which issue, um, review committee or on um, the contract, or do you mean both? Just to, to clarify. Um, 
I think I can com communicate on both issues. Um, so for the review committee, I think we, we feel that it should be separate from the ASOAC. Okay. And for the contract, uh, we don't want to get into too much uh, legal detail right now. So yes, I can communicate both of those. Thank you very much, Alan. And um, so that would be very, very helpful. So first, uh, confirm on the first team mailing list, and then um, um, on the global list. Um, thank you, Alan, for volunteering on the two points. So uh, let's move on to the last part of the agenda, that is preparation for the second draft. Actually, we actually covered the 4A part um, by confirming who's willing to uh, draft the text and who's willing to communicate on the global list uh, for the three issues I've listed. And then um, one more point, 4B, is um, we haven't actually um, shared our draft with the IETF or um, ICANN's uh, cross-community working group, and we feel that we should actually um, forward our current proposal to these, um, these communities as a reference. Oh, it doesn't matter either way. Um, so I, I personally feel that at least for the IETF, there seems to be some overlap, um, and then there are parts that we actually mentioned about um, about the um, the reverse um, DNS. Um, so um, it may be helpful that we we share on this uh, IETF the related working group, and then have them take a look to see if our language makes sense. Tom, how, how do you feel about this? Makes sense uh, from Andre and then Ronnie, please. Thank you. Um, sorry, could, could everyone else please mute their mics? There's a lot of uh, back noise at the moment. I think Sean, perhaps, could you please mute your mic? Thank you. Uh, I just wanted to say I think that makes sense uh, to communicate uh, that with uh, with well both other groups and and also to to give them a pointer to our global list. There, there are several people who are members of several communities, so um, I think it's it's good to both coordinate but also to invite comments uh, in, on our global list. Thanks. Thank you for this uh, support, Murani. So it seems everybody um, supports this approach and um, communicating with both the IETF and Murani has ex explicitly mentioned that she also supports communicating with the ICANN's cross community working group. So um, I'll, I'll do that, um, share our current draft to the mailing list, the edited version. So. I think we've covered everything on the agenda. And um, is there anything else that uh, we'd like to discuss um, for today, except for the next call, the schedule for the next call? Sure, um, I agree, Andre. The comments should be directed to the IANA global list. Yes, I, I agree. Yes. Thank you, Andre, for um, this clarification. It's very important. So um, I don't see any um, suggestions for other um, points to be discussed. So let's uh, confirm the schedule for the next call. I think it's uh, scheduled on the 2nd of January. And um, I don't see that many um, comments being posted on the IANA um, list, um, maybe due to holiday season and all. So I think I'm quite comfortable with um, having the next uh, meeting as scheduled, the 2nd of January. So unless anybody feels we should have a meeting before this, um, let's uh, plan our meeting on the 2nd um, as uh, initially planned. Yep, I don't see any other comments. So um, before I Close, I'd like to do a recap of the um, action items um, 
before the next meeting, and then this is uh, to um, for each of the issues listed: um, intellectual property rights, review committee, and on uh, the contract. Um, the idea is to um, summarize the the positions we actually um, discussed at the call today, communicate to the Christie mailing list, and then confirm uh, our consensus position. And then if there are no further issues, um, communicate further on the IANA list. So um, thank you, Andre and Alan, for volunteering on this part. And if there are no other um, comments, I'd like to close the meeting for today. So thank you. Um, do we need to receive any further comments? Um, I see a comment from Craig. Do we need to receive any further comments? Do we need to have a meeting on the 2nd of January? Um, I, I think your point is to confirm whether do we actually need to have a meeting um, on the 2nd of January. I, I do actually like to uh, plan um, the, um, the meeting um, to be held on the 2nd. And in case there are no issues whatsoever to be discussed, then we can actually cancel it. So let's plan um, the meeting on the 2nd of January. Yeah, thank you, John, for supporting this. So um, I'd like to close the meeting uh, for today. And thank you for everybody, uh, including the observers, for joining the call. And then talk to you all again on the 2nd of January. Thanks, all. Bye. Thank you.